Hello, uh, welcome to Juniper Networks Learning Byte. My name is Mark Yunus. I'm a lab at Tech Education Services Lab Team. In this learning byte, we'll be showing you how to deploy ESRX3 on EFNG Community Edition. So, before we begin, let's uh, find some facts about uh, what EFNG is. So, EFNG stands for Emulated Virtual Environment Next Generation. And that's according to the uh, EFNG website. It's a great tool for learning uh, new uh, interconnected technologies such as networking, uh, virtualization, and so on. You know, where you can use the AVNG web UI to kind of drag and drop your networking or server nodes uh, uh, into, the, into the topology and connect them together and, and, and configure them as you want uh, and, then, uh, and then access them through the web GUI. Okay, pretty uh, simple to use and it allows sharing topologies with others. Uh, and so on. And EVNG uh, server can be deployed on uh, you know any new generation computers, PCs usually. You know Intel based PCs works better in my opinion. Uh, and then uh, bare metal servers, uh, uh, hypervisors, and the cloud. So it comes with an ISO file as well, where you can kind of mount it in a bare metal server or in a VM on inside your hypervisor. In my case, ESX uh, server, I created a VM with EVNG ISO mounted and I basically went through the installation process and then, uh, you know, enabled uh, hardware assisted virtualization so that I can run nested uh, VMs inside my EVNG. So EVNG itself is kind of like, you know, it uses a QVM uh, KVM based hybrid inside, okay? And for this demonstration, I'll be using uh, communication which is free as a play. And there are paid versions with more features and support. So you can check out from the website. As of today, most of the uh, uh, Juniper appliances, uh, such as uh, VSREX, VMX, VKFX, uh, VRR, they all seem to work with the current EVNG platform. Again, if there's a new version, you better always check with the EVNG project site and see if that's uh, supported or not. Uh, uh, so, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to start the demonstration process. Before we uh, go to the event site, I need to first uh, get a VSRX image copied into a specific location for AVNG to detect. Okay, so in my case, I'm going to SSH to my AVNG server, which I'm already deep right now. So, it's a, it's, a v, it's a VM that I just SSH to it. And I created a folder called uh, images under the root directory. And in under that images folder, I have different images that I downloaded from the Nipper site. This is this VSRX. So I downloaded the KVM version of VSRX 3, 21.4, R1, 0.12, QCOS image, saved under my um, uh, slash root uh, uh, images, uh, VSRX 3 folder, VSRX folder. Okay. And we're going to actually move this image to a specific location according to the AVNG uh, documentation. Okay, you can check the how to that in the AVNG site, and they, they have different documentation for different uh, 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 image types. Okay, and you have to follow a certain naming standard as well. So that's also described pretty well in the website. Okay, so I have this command uh, here, kind of like what I'm running here. So I have the already, and I downloaded my images there already in the this folder I showed you. So now I have to first. Uh, Go to this uh, specific directory. Uh, this is where yeah, FNG stores all the images. I kind of pull it up from this directory. By default. Uh, so I have uh, already. I have a Linux uh, and a, another VSRX 21.3 downloaded. So I'm just create a new folder. This one, System 34. Copy to save some time. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna. CD to the directory. Okay, it's empty. So now I'm going to copy. Copy. Let me put the uh, this command here. So the copy I have to go root. I think. EP root images vsrx. This file that I downloaded from Juniper site to this directory under a different name. So that's the naming convention you have to follow to make sure that you know follow the process itself described in the EVNG uh, how to documentation page. So once I do that, I'm gonna copy. You could move it, but I, I decided to copy so that I can use it again if I need to for something wrong goes on with my image. 
So I, I keep a copy. Uh, so I'm going to copy here. And it's done. Here, so it's going to be 49 maybe. Right? Now, the last thing I do is just uh, make sure I run this fix permission command, which is also described in the uh, event site. Kind of, you know, re, re detect all the permissions uh, because I put this uh, file in the folder. So it's almost like a re detect, okay? Done. So now I'm done with the image part, importing the image into EVNG. Now I should be able to scope the EVNG GUI and, and uh, look at the image and use it, okay? So I'm going to minimize. Uh, Actually, I'm just going to open another browser here. Log out here, sorry. I'll log back in. So this is my uh, EVNG web GUI uh, URL, it's on my network. And I'm using 22.0.3.1.2 community edition. Okay, as of, uh, I mean, uh, this is what I got. I'm going to log in to the admin account. And I tend to use the HTML5 console because that's all web-based. I don't have to use any specific software in my client to do that. And I believe that uses guacamole in the back end, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So now I'm, I'm back, I'm, I'm on to my uh, blank canvas, but uh, I'm going to close the lab. So I have lab open probably. I'm going to delete that. I don't need that. Let's create a new lab. Let's give it a name. Just uh, VSRX3. I will default skip timeout. It's a very huge topology man will increase the timeout. And just some description. You can add anything, you know. A task, you know, if you have a specific task you wanna put the lab, some information for the folks, you can put those under. So here, like you will say, you know, deploy BSRX3. Click on save. Then I'll get the blank canvas. Now I should be able to add uh, an image. Okay, I'm going to click on uh, add an object. Let's add a node. Let's add our VSRX. Let's filter it to that. So as you see, there are like a lot of other images you can do, different vendors. Okay. I, I need one of this. You can have multiple here by selecting multiple. And then you can deselect which image you want to use. So by default, it chose the new one, but there's an older version as well I could use, right? Like I'll choose the new one. I'm going to give it a name VSRX1. Keep this default URI. I don't usually change. There's the SRX image already. Uh, you can change the image if you have any special interest. Uh, so I'm going to give it default CPU and RAM. Uh, default uh, uh, no, Ethernet ports, I'll keep it as it is. You can change the size. I mean, if you want more interfaces, you can change this number to five or something. If you want, right? So I'm going to click four. And there are some default value. I usually keep them default. Uh, but I was better, I think, in my opinion. But you can choose different NIC types. Uh, it's a different kind of image. And uh, you can pass some parameters, which I'm not going to go detail uh, at this point. You can check the documentation. And uh, uh, style configs and if you want a delay and all that. I usually keep default here in most cases unless I really have a requirement. But you know, for advanced use case, you can do all that. I'm going to click on save. Add a more router here. Now I'm going to add a, uh, another uh, VM, Linux. I already imported that. That's also I follow the how to document uh, documentation. It's available. One. I'm going to change the CPU to one and very small VM. One uh one make is fine. I will keep it all default here. And I delay like you know 10 seconds for this one so that the PSS uh, spins up first. Okay. Now I will add a network object, network, call it management. Let's call it 
cloud zero, so the default management cloud zero, that basically maps to the ETH zero of my uh, EVNG uh, VM, right? And if it's in a VM environment, you want to make sure the port group assigned to has, uh, you know, promiscuous mode now turned on. And that's explained on the EVNG community cookbook. You can find on the website, like, you know, there's a, uh, this is a professional, but uh, it's a community cookbook, like you can, you can, you can learn more about the networking system. Pretty uh, comprehensive cookbook, okay? Uh, so you can check that, but I'm going to choose the management, Let's save, it's almost like a bridge with uh, with an external link in it, so I'm going to then connect to that, and ask me which interface I want to uh, map it to, so the default one is 0, and it's going to be mapped to the uh, uh, management internet, and I can do the same thing for the PSRX. Okay, FSP0 is the one, first one I'm going to choose for management and click on save. Okay, so uh, it's all ready. So uh, now I'm going to just uh, start the uh, node on the VMs, just both of these VMs, uh, this topology, and I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back. I'll probably pre-configure the VSRX and Linux with some IPs and stuff so that I can show the connectivity, okay? Uh, uh, so I'm just going to start the node with the node. Right. Okay. I'm going to go to the boot process, I think. There you go. Start the boot process. Okay, it looks like uh, our VMs are back online uh, after we powered them on. I did configure some IP on uh, each of them uh, so that we don't have to spend time uh, showing you how to create uh, an IP on a general device. There are courses, uh, documentation you can check. So uh, my VSRS1 VM, I'm going to click on this uh, VSRS1 here. It'll connect me to the channel of that. And we'll see, uh, I'm going to log in. You see 2.1.4. Show the chance here for PC. Summary, good. Show my interfaces, stars. I got some uh, links there. I only connected uh, uh, FXP0 into an IP right now, so. So I have uh, FXP0 configured with uh, 172511.1. And on the uh, on the Linux VM, it's uh, 172511.254. So I'm just going to ping that. Sorry. I can ping it. Let me go to the topology and I'm gonna bring up the list. So basically all HTML5 right now is using looks like guacamole. And you can do all sorts of stuff here to testing uh, the tablet and stuff. Sorry. Close it for now. Turn over here. See if I can use the switch that uh, Yes, looks like I got a login from the user side. That's good. Let me see if I can do the J web. It's by default configured with the GUI version of VSRX. Let's see. There you go. You can log in now. Perfect. So that's about it. You know, uh, I mean, you can definitely do a lot of things uh, using the uh, topology page with different tools and stuff. You can save it uh, and add more notes. Uh, but this is pretty basic of how to get a VS4 X3 deployed on on a uh, VNG community edition. I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, 
industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Network's certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.